A few weeks ago I attended GDC in San Francisco, looked at some tall trees and visited the Nvidia booth. I'm not the most diplomatic person, which I discovered when I questioned my very existence in front of the customs officer on my way into America. I watched him grilling all the people in front of me about GDC and I thought I was ready for a grilling, but I wasn't quite ready for the things he said. He demanded some yes no answers to some very non yes no questions and then when he asked me what I was doing here and I said I was a YouTuber who had been invited along by Nvidia to meet and talk to people and to film stuff at GDC, he insisted I wouldn't be allowed to film anything which threw me totally off guard. With hindsight I think I was meant to stand my ground and to argue with him but it's kind of intimidating to do that when you're being interrogated by someone of authority with a gun on them and so I just continued responding as honestly as I could with stuff like, if that's the case then I don't know why I've been invited to America but please don't say that to a customs officer if you're trying to get into America because it doesn't go down well. Credit to him though, obviously he did let me into America and I wasn't deported or anything and when I finally made it to Nvidia's booths I was allowed to film there and there were a bunch of cool looking demos, some of which we've seen in the video form already. And I guess I'm partly making this video because Nvidia invited me along but also because I want to prove to American Customs that I was allowed to film here and that I do have some sort of purpose. Now in this room there are all sorts of cool looking demos, some of which we've seen in video form already but I was able to get my hands on it and to push the character up to the walls and to glitch through scenery and all that sort of stuff, it was great fun. Everybody here was very passionate about what they did. Sure, that means they're very knowledgeable about it and can talk in great depth about things that up till now only I've actually cared about. But there was another side to it that I appreciated just as much. Some of the engineers had a very self-deprecating and dark sense of humour and weren't afraid to be critical about and to meme on the tools and features that they had spent years of their lives developing. You know how DLSS's frame gen is dismissed as being fake frames? Well, in conversation Nvidia engineers just casually refer to them as fake frames as well. It was all rather dank and they were very aware and keen to discuss the limitations and drawbacks of the technologies they were working on, which makes sense I guess. These engineers aren't here to market the tech, they're here to develop and to improve on these things and it was great just to be able to discuss it with them rather than just to get a clean clinical marketing response from a marketing man who just spouts the same buzzwords again and again. Did you know, for instance, that Nvidia engineers use all kinds of cool code names for DLSS builds but opted to name them boring stuff in the drivers like preset K. So if in a later update they give them all cool sounding names then I'm going to take partial credit for suggesting they do that. At points though I didn't feel like I knew enough about it to be able to ask sensible questions about the tech and that I'd probably just disappoint them by suggesting something really obvious that they already considered and dismissed years ago. For example, they were saying how difficult it was to get frame gen working with HUD elements especially transparent bits of the menus where every solution is a trade-off of some sort, to which I suggested that the game's HUD should be kept as an overlay that isn't included in the frame gen part of it at all. You know, sort of like how some games let you use a hardware mouse cursor that's separate from the in-game frame rate and rendering and that sort of stuff, or how an FPS counter on your screen doesn't get smeared across the screen by frame gen, but apparently it's not as simple as that, because if it was then they'd have done that already. But the Reflex 2 demo is probably the thing you'll want to know about the most. What is Reflex 2? Well, Nvidia divide their features between DLSS and Reflex, though it's a bit of a mess in the DLSS department because there are some DLSS features like upscaling which drop latency but there are also some that increase it, like frame gen. Now while frame gen requires Reflex to be on, Reflex doesn't require frame gen to be on. Reflex focuses on cutting latency which everybody can agree is a good thing. Reflex 1 goes about this by optimising how the rendering pipeline travels between your CPU, GPU and screen. Aside from there being potentially a bit more power draw, there's no other downside to using Reflex 1. Reflex 2 goes even further to try and cut the latency even more and it does this by applying the latest mouse inputs to a frame that's already being rendered by the GPU. So it's almost like it's showing mouse inputs a frame earlier than before and in theory it's possible to combine this with frame gen to reduce the input latency which is the one major downside that comes with fake frames. So it means that you could have all this on and it would be the best of all worlds, but all that is still in the future for now. While at this booth, my testing of Reflex 2 was there simply to determine whether it cut latency and whether it came with any visual downsides. The demonstration I got my hands on was in the finals at 90fps and I had a button that toggled between no Reflex being on, Reflex 1 and then the new Reflex 2 which made it very easy to cycle between all these different settings and to feel the differences. It quickly dawned on me that there was no way to convey the difference in felt latency between the different settings but I did film this close up of the weapon model as I cycled between Reflex off 1 and 2. 
Now, frame view was visible in the corner of the screen, displaying the frame rate and latency readings. Frame rate remained about 90 FPS regardless of the settings used, but the latency readings effectively halved with every step, going from 40 ish milliseconds of latency with Reflex Off down to just 20 milliseconds with Reflex One on, and then down further to 10 ish milliseconds of latency with Reflex 2 enabled. So while it does indeed half the latency again, mathematically the improvement isn't double. It's more like 50% better than what Reflex 1 enabled already. Kind of like how the leap from 120 to 240 FPS is only half the improvement that the jump from 60 to 120 is. But it's still obviously an improvement. So in short, Reflex 2 made playing the finals at 90 FPS feel more like I was playing at a higher frame rate or on a more responsive monitor than were I only using Reflex 1 or nothing at all. So that's good. It does what it intends to do. My secondary concerns with Reflex 2 were things like it incorrectly calculating the mouse movements, which could maybe result in stuttery motion or mouse smoothing, but none of that transpired. It appears to fulfil its intended gameplay purpose. But what about visually? You see, in order to update an existing frame for new mouse movements means shifting stuff about, which leaves gaps behind that it needs to fill in. You can see these areas being represented by white areas on the screen just here. Now honestly, I couldn't spot any issues around the edges of the screen. You're not really looking there anyway, so if you're okay with how that looks with frame gen on, then you won't mind with Reflex 2 on either. But I did sometimes think I saw the anti-aliased portions around the character models leaving a ghostly remnant. I proudly present to you some quarter speed motion, showing the difference between Reflex 1 and Reflex 2. Indeed, a line of half transparent pixels from around the weapon model are among the new artifacts that Reflex 2's info feature seems to introduce, but some of this was there already before, because the finals has terrible image quality in general. A few times I thought I saw artifacts from Reflex, but disabling it didn't do away with them, so I imagine this game's shimmery looking reflections and trailer looking anti aliasing contributes to the visual noise and, in a way, masks which artifacts are new with Reflex 2. So I'm pretty sure in this game, at the settings and frame rates, Reflex 2 does add some new visual bugs, but they're kind of dwarfed by how many are in the game already. So maybe you should see this whole thing as being like, well, the game comes with shimmery artifacts already, so why not add a few more to noticeably improve the gameplay experience while you're at it? I spoke with Nvidia's engineers about the infill technology. It doesn't use AI, it just fills in the gaps with what's around it. They said the current decisions were made with minimising latency in mind, but they didn't rule out the possibility of using AI to more intelligently fill in these areas in future versions of Reflex. So with the technology yet to be seen outside of this booth that I got to visit, I imagine they're still tweaking and refining it as much as possible. When I test something, I like to try and break it. With Reflex 2, that would involve testing a game without any visual problems already, which would make Reflex 2's visual imperfections more obvious. I could also stress test the tech by dropping the frame rate down to something like 20 FPS. Unfortunately, they wouldn't let me do this in the demonstration. And while I did briefly consider forcefully taking over the computer, forcing Super Sampling on and whipping the mouse about for a few seconds before being dragged out by security and banned indefinitely, I decided against it. Honestly, 90 FPS is probably a sensible frame rate to use Reflex 2 at. It's high enough to look smooth, but not high enough that Reflex 2's added improvement to the latency becomes too slight to appreciate. But I would still love to test Reflex 2 out at 30 or 40 FPS just to see if it could pass as being responsive as 60 is. But for that, I'll just have to wait for the tech to be released. What else did I do while I was in America? Well, I looked at some big trees, went on a sunset cruise, and found a money-saving hack where I bought one of these every day from Target to serve as breakfast, drink, and dessert all in one. I got to meet Dennis, the maker of Teardown, and he showed me a bunch of awesome physics demos and then let me shower environments with spaghetti and wriggly worms everywhere. And I've got to say, it was amazing just to walk about the GDC buildings and to chat to people. Going to lectures, it felt like a university full of an assortment of successful industry veterans and up and coming game devs, all doing different things and you just know that here or there, someone's project will exceed expectations and will become the next big thing. Regardless of how successful everything is, it's still fascinating to hear everybody's stories. The entire thing was extremely inspirational and motivational for my own game development journey too. It's just, being in San Francisco, it's a very long way for me to travel. And I walked through Tenderloin at night, which was an interesting experience. But the scariest moment for me came during a Q&A session with high-level NVIDIA engineers. I submitted a question using the online question submitter, although I wasn't entirely sure about my question and I kind of hoped they wouldn't read it out or ask me to clarify what I meant. So obviously they immediately read it out and asked, who said that? and I had to try and explain what I meant in front of all the experts and tech journalists there. If you must know, my question was about how the AI-generated neural faces worked. 
Did they still need an underlying animated ray traced face beneath to base the look and lighting on, or does it replace the conventional rendering of a character's face entirely? And in case you're wondering on the answer, the AI right now just acts as an overlay. So extrapolating forward, you can imagine a game where everything's neurally rendered, it would still be using a path traced render of the game in the background to help it get the animations and lighting just right. And it turns out this was answered in the first video we got about the neural faces, so oh dear. So yeah, it was really cool to chat with everybody there. Thank you to NVIDIA for inviting me along and for allowing me to film at the event. And it was absolutely wonderful to chat with everyone there. They're all lovely.